last week, my guest Megan Furness really got me to thinking about, uh, she mentioned the word responsibility means responsibility, not just responsibility. And uh, she spoke about how saying yes leads to something else. And it really got me to thinking about how the, the basic words and the basic ideas that we can really use as a guide in some way on our paths. And then I read this article about successful people, especially people who become more successful with age or with time. What characteristics do they nurture? What characteristics do they have that define their success or perhaps lead to their success? And it struck me reading that list that that also applies to spiritual life. Spiritual success and worldly success are not the same thing, but surprisingly, they have many things in common. So let's take a look through this list of interesting words and ideas and see whether the things that age teaches us, because this is a list of what age teaches us, is also true for what we learn in order to follow a spiritual path. Check it out. The first step in everything about the spiritual path is self-awareness. It does, of course, raise the discussion of what exactly is the self, and that's a too large a discussion to go into just in the context of this show. But of course, the self refers to something we may think of as other than the ego I self. It's more like that I that feels like you have the body and you have the emotions and you have the thoughts and you have that identity that you take into the everyday world all the time. But there's that greater sense of I that is beyond that. Maybe that's a soul awareness or something like that. So that self-awareness is at the beginning of every spiritual path. It's throughout every spiritual path and it is the ultimate destination of the spiritual path. Sometimes what is called on spiritual paths, self-realization, making the self real. That's making the true self real not the ego self that has that ego everyday identity in it all the time. So self-awareness is the first step at success on the spiritual path because it's the, the origin of the idea of consciousness. Being aware of yourself and yourself in the world makes you conscious of everything and makes you ready to face what does it mean to be a soul in the world? What is this self? that I'm putting into the world. Self-acceptance. Well, for self-awareness to go anywhere, self-acceptance needs to follow or be a part of that. Essentially, if we don't accept ourselves, then we don't know ourselves. For an astrologer, a lot of who we are is there from the very beginning. You know, a geneticist or a biologist might say the same thing. A physicist might say the same thing because they're the ones who tell us that time is essentially an illusion. So then the self is already there. Certainly there's room for improvement. Self-acceptance doesn't mean, uh, well, we just have to deal with the warts and all, that there's no way of rising above them or anything like that. But self-acceptance means I start with myself, that this is me. And from here, I might be able to master that or improve that. I might be able to become more aware. I might be able to grow spiritually. But without accepting who I am and where I am now, I have no starting point and I have no being point. You know, in the psychological article that I read, they said, you, you, no one else will accept you if you don't accept yourself. And I think that's Besides the point, I think it's more important that you accept yourself than that other people accept you because once you accept yourself, you're ready to allow yourself to do whatever needs to be done to improve your life. Humility is, of course, one of the most important characteristics to cultivate in order to be able to follow our spiritual paths and sincerely find ourselves in the context of a larger world with more people and more creatures and more beings and consciousness then we know even how to understand. So then the first point becomes humility. 
for that and says, well, in order to understand that, I understand that I'm just a bubble in the mass of bubbles. I'm a cell in the mass of cells. You know, one cell is as important as all the other cells. It's not saying I'm not important. Humility doesn't mean you must uh, count yourself as lesser or negative. Humility is really about understanding that you are no better than other life, other people, other consciousness, and others that aspire towards, be it consciousness or in fact anything that you might be aspiring towards. So humility as a spiritual uh, characteristic or as one we would cultivate to try and walk a spiritual path, I think is probably the most important one and is of course a characteristic of those who even follow the path in the great religions. Humility must be balanced with self-acceptance. It mustn't be allowed to combine into a negative force that undermines or destroys itself. But humility and self-acceptance is the equalizer that says, since I'm no better and no worse, I can be happy with where I am. Another word or phrase that came up when talking about success in the world was self-control. And I thought that quite interesting because it does, of course, refer really to self-mastery or a process of attempting to master our drives and instincts. It's really about consciousness and awareness. So I started off speaking about the self and what this, what is the self that has that sense of awareness? Well, if it's not exactly the body or the mind or the feelings or any of those kinds of things, then it is that greater self that is somehow or somewhat in charge. Not necessarily easily able to control everything else, but at the same time responsible for ensuring that awareness and consciousness grows and that consequences don't happen because of lack of humility or lack of self-control. So self-control is really, I guess, the thing which allows us to bring our spiritual principles and our spiritual aspirations into our everyday lives. It's also the thing that ensures that we're able to be accountable and responsible and that we don't cause too many unnecessary consequences in our lives. So self-control means preventing yourself from engaging too fully in action and reaction in the world and maintaining focus on the self. And that, of course, gets us to the subject of responsibility. You have to own who you are and you have to own what you do. And therefore, you have to own the consequences of what you do. You know, a discussion I saw on Facebook today made me think about that even more carefully because there's a fine line that needs to be drawn. Certainly, and very importantly, we must be responsible for who we are. We must be responsible for what happens as a result of what we do. Otherwise, we can't grow from it and we'll always feel like we're a victim of outside circumstances. But we do need to acknowledge that outside circumstances are not our responsibility necessarily. There are many that aren't. There are many things that happen to us that are not our responsibility, but our responsibility lies in how we res respond to that. You know, uh, Megan Furness on the show last week said, responsibility means response ability, the ability to respond. So how you respond to what's going on in the world is what's important. You are not necessarily important, uh, responsible in the sense of accountable for an illness that happens to you. And that was part of the discussion I was seeing online. But you are responsible for how you deal with it, how you choose to uh, own it in some way, and how you choose to use self-awareness and self-control to rise above it and continue on your journey. You know, also on that list was the idea that we should react thankfully or with, with gratitude 
for everything that happens as well. And for me, I think we are in danger of undermining ourselves a little bit too much when we assume that we must be grateful for everything that happens to us. But a good strategy, and I think maybe what that idea refers to, is identifying certain things to be grateful for in order to encourage and grow humility, in order to encourage and grow the idea that you are actually just a small part of something very much larger than yourself and of course to prevent us from growing too strong in the ego side of things so maybe gratitude is a good balance to that but again responsibility and accountability tell us that we must own things and we must be then responsible for how we move on and deal from them. Gratitude is a good place to start from to get us to be humble, but make sure that it doesn't remove the idea of responsibility. So gratitude is useful when you tie it to the idea of responsibility as a response to the world. Ensuring that gratitude doesn't mean you undermine the fact that you are accountable and uh, responsible for everything that happens to you, uh, but let it be a good place to start for your responsibility, how you respond to everything that happens around you. Because gratitude is a good word to switch into, it's not all about me, uh, maybe someone else helped generate this, or it means it's not about what happens, it's about how I respond to it. But I think what really does engender humility and what um, self-awareness and self-control etc can lead to very importantly is compassion in that uh, business article they called it being other centered but I think compassion is really the word that we're looking for and compassion if you understand that everyone is the same as you and uh, you know and therefore even whether they living the same life as you, even if they're the same species as you, is recognizing that everything that lives, everyone that lives, every being of any kind that lives, only wants to survive, to get to the end of the day, to feed itself, and to get what it needs to get in order for that to happen, and feels vulnerable, exposed to a great big world, just like you do. Understanding that we all essentially on the same path, the path that leads nowhere helps us understand that everyone is the same as us that in the end for example whether you have power or whether you have money or whether you have influence in the end when you leave the planet we all know you take none of it with you that is a great equalizer and that helps us remember that even people who are different than us in all sorts of ways are in essence the same as us. Much more importantly though, compassion is what opens our hearts. It opens our hearts to others. It opens our hearts in general so that we can experience life with an open heart. We spoke about sorrow and how sorrow does the same thing in a previous episode. Compassion is the way to do that without sorrow. Which takes us to the fact that in order to uh, accept that others are the same and be compassionate, you also have to be uh, non-judgmental, open-minded about what happens in the world, what other people do, what other people choose to do. We have a tremendous tendency to judge each other as right or wrong, not only coming from the lofty positions of religions and predefined ethical templates that sometimes come along with them or with other philosophies, but also from our own sense of righteousness and being right. We've all been guilty of that, I'm guilty of that, and that becomes a form of judgment. If you understand that judging other as right or wrong also is an inhibition on your open-mindedness, your, your acceptance that the world is full of millions of things of every kind that essentially you don't get to define. So open-mindedness is a way of being humble. Open-mindedness is a way of saying, 
I don't necessarily know. I don't necessarily know what's right or why people do things that they do. So accepting that everyone is on the same path means being open-minded to how they go about choosing that path and learning perhaps one of the great spiritual lessons that all the teachers try and teach us and that is not to judge others. And perhaps a more challenging one in the world we live in today and all the crazy stuff happening around us is optimism to approach the world with optimism maybe even to take it one step further and to say to approach the world with a certain amount of awe now we can't pretend that we naive with experience with awareness and with aging come an understanding that the world is a difficult place and that things often don't go how people want them to go that no matter how much people do their best and take responsibility and do all of those kind of things bad stuff happens to good people it's one of those difficult things for us to accept in the world so perhaps it makes us find it more difficult to have that sense of optimism and awe but there is much to be awestruck about it's not that awe is supposed to make us uh, imagine that bad things aren't bad but awe helps us remember that there's a world that's bigger than us that there's a lot that we don't understand that there's a lot that's indescribable like indescribable beauty all of those things help contextualize us. Most people find it actually quite a relief when you say go up a mountain and you see yourself as just an ant in a vast sea of the size of mountains and clouds and ocean. Something people here in Cape Town know very well, that feeling. And that sense of awe and that sense of smallness that you get from the sense of awe is also something which seems to alleviate the spirit, make life feel a little bit easier because it literally helps you understand that the world is so much bigger than you that it's pointless trying to uh, understand it as a reason to be happy. Maybe we feel unhappy often because we don't understand what's going on and awe uh, and wonder help us remember you can't always understand and help accepting that you don't understand might be a way of letting go of some of what causes you pain that can also help us develop a better sense of optimism in the same way many people rehearse in their heads the worst case scenario rehearsing this the best case scenario can often help us approach something with better sense of humility and a more open mind we might not be able to control the outcome but that open mind helps our response and our responsibility adaptability is another quality that makes for successful people whether you're in the world of business or in any particular profession the ability to adapt to changing circumstances is perhaps one of the signs of an ability to succeed. When we apply that to ourselves and when we apply that to our spiritual selves, it presses deeper buttons. One of the, the, the things we, we struggle with on our spiritual journey and on our journey through life is that sense of identity that I mentioned at the start of the show. And the sense of identity that we have to carefully balance so that it doesn't take over in the sense that our ego defines our sense of who we are. We want our sense of identity to also include what we've spoken about here, and that is that I am a larger thing than just that ego I, just this name Rod. It's a larger sense of me that has all of those things, but isn't all of those things. Adaptability is important because as life deals us various blows and changes, it challenges our sense of identity and it challenges what we accept about ourselves. It challenges what we accept about the world. Adaptability is the most important tool for spiritual growth because it causes all the other ones to be on their toes. It tests and it challenges the other ones. The fact is 
that the world is about change. The world is forever changing. And that that's why the definition of success is adaptability. But although the identity seems to transcend time and space in some way, at the same time, being in time and space meaning means that adaptability not only helps you with all those other characteristics that I mentioned, but also ensures that you don't tie reality to one thing. If, if things around you are constantly changing and causing you to constantly adapt, then the greatest lesson you've learned is that reality is not a fixed thing that's going to make me feel secure. The only thing is that greater sense of identity that is forever having to adapt to all these other things and can. That's the only thing that's real. The only thing that doesn't change is the one that has to adapt to all the change. And that's the true self. The article about successful people claimed that successful people were honest people. And I think that a lot of people might have something to say about that. Perhaps it depends on which success that you're talking about. Maybe it depends about on what you mean by honesty. So I wouldn't go as far as to say that success uh, is necessarily related to honesty. But I would suggest that honesty to ourselves f and honesty to the world is the surest way to maintain and pursue a sense of self. Because as soon as we are dishonest about who we are, we are not able to accept ourselves. And as soon as we are dishonest about the world, then we're not able to have an open mind, we're not able to take responsibility, we're not able to adapt to it. So honesty is a very important quality in terms of understanding yourself and understanding the world. It does follow that the only natural thing to do after that is to be honest to others. And certainly from a spiritual point of view, that is a very important characteristic. For business, I leave it to other people who know better about that to decide whether that is the case or not. But honesty with yourself, honesty about the world, generates honesty to others. And as long as you try and practice that, you're not carrying extra baggage, you're not creating delusion. Certainly a very important one for us to think about on the spiritual path, just as is the final one. And that is patience. To me, the most important one of all, because patience is about timing. Yes, a successful person is patient, knows how to wait for it, knows that it doesn't come when you demand, and that certain things, good things, take time to come. But patience is also all about there's a right time for everything. That's a very fundamental principle that astrology is even based on, that everything has its proper time, that everything unfolds at a time in accordance with our own particular karma. So patience is an acceptance of that. Again, it's not a defeat. It's not saying I'll wait indefinitely. Maybe you don't know when something is going to emerge. It means I'll go with the natural timing. It also helps you not focus on outcomes all the time. In business, you are focused on outcomes and this list would have to take you patience for an outcome. But in following your path, you only really care about the journey. Patience helps you remember that it's all about the journey, that all you have to do is be aware of timing. Patience is about whatever is at the end of this journey, I will get there in the end. So I don't have to make that happen any faster and I don't have to try and be in control of time. Because if there's one thing I'm not in control of, it's time. So patience means I accept. I accept who I am and where I am and I accept that the moment is perfect right now because it is the only moment that there is. Well, that is quite a lot to think about and especially in the context of success in the world but most importantly for us, success in following our paths to know ourselves, something that we're really concerned with on this show. To that list, there is one thing I would like to add, I think, that I aspire to uh, in 
pursuit of a spiritual path and knowing myself and that is knowing when to be silent i think one of the great lessons of age is knowing more and more uh, to keep silent when otherwise you might have reacted and just step away walk away and carry on with your own path i think that's one of the great spiritual lessons and that's the one that i'm working on don't forget to uh, check the Facebook page, see what's going on, like it. Join us next week for a look at the month ahead. August ends in an eclipse and uh, very important to talk about that before it comes around. So that's why we're doing the month ahead show next week. Important also in world affairs. There's so much going on around that eclipse as well. So join us and we'll see if we can see what it is that... Uh, ancient people who worried a lot about eclipses might have said about this one and what modern astrologers also have to think about that so be here the usual time next Friday see you then <laughs>